LGBT advocates in New Zealand push for diversity, inclusion, and acceptance, and their movement has gained a lot of success over recent years. But how do we know when they've gone too far? How do we know when this push for personal acceptance crosses the line into dangerous, tyrannical, ideological thinking? They cross this line when they no longer accept the beliefs and lifestyle choices of other individuals. When they seek to erase the traditional foundations of religion and replace them with their own. This is happening now in New Zealand. And in this episode, I'm going to let you know how. Welcome to another episode of Cutting the Line, where we take a more in-depth, uncensored look at New Zealand news and culture. If you like what we do and want to support us, please like this video and subscribe. Bethlehem College in New Zealand is currently under investigation by the Ministry of Education after Pride advocates complained that it did not provide a safe and inclusive environment for members of the rainbow community. This all started in December 2021, when Tauranga Pride advocate Gordy Lockhart wrote a letter to the Associate Education Minister Jantinetti claiming that the school's statement of belief that marriage is between a man and a woman was an act of discrimination under the Human Rights Act of 1993. Gordy Lockhart also claimed that this was unlawful after the passing of the Marriage Amendment Act in 2013. I think my greatest concern with the Statement of Belief in uh, Bethlehem College's uh, Statement of Belief document um, is civil rights, is human rights. Ultimately, what it suggests is that you cannot be who you are. Uh, you have to conform to a rule uh, given to you by religion. Uh, our nation, our government states that marriage is between two persons, uh, not specifically between a male and a female. And I think what needs to change, well, ultimately that clause needs to go. People need to realise that it's 2022 uh, and ultimately it's about you be you. You be yourself. People should be allowed to be who they are born to be. Now, the main concern of religious leaders in New Zealand before this act was passed that was that they would be open to claims of discrimination if the churches refused to marry same-sex couples. It seems to me that this right that was given to members of the LGBT community to marry somebody of the same sex is now being used as a weapon to openly discriminate against others for their religious beliefs. Bethlehem College's Christian school is a special character state integrated school, which means that it was once a private school, but integrated with the state in order to receive public funding. When it integrated with the state in 1999, this statement, which is causing the most controversy at the moment, the one that says that a marriage is between a man and a woman, was not included on its statement of belief. This was later added in 2019. Now, the Ministry for Education is citing this as the reason why they have asked them to remove it, saying that because it was not included at time of integration, it cannot be included now. But when you look at the Education and Training Act 2020, you will see under the section Preservation of Special Character of State Integrated Schools that the school itself has the right to make changes if it believes that the special character of the school has been or is likely to be jeopardized. So why is the school not allowed to keep this statement? Why do they have to remove it when it was likely put in place in order to protect the school's special character? When it was put in place to make sure that those enrolling at the school were clearly informed as to the beliefs of the Christian school. Why are people allowed to claim discrimination because of their beliefs when the school itself cannot claim discrimination based on religious grounds? This is not the only controversy surrounding the school at the moment, and it's not the only way that the school is being discriminated against because of its beliefs. It has recently told its trans student that they will not use their new pronouns, their new name, and will not allow the student to wear the uniform of the opposite gender. This later led to the student trying to kill themselves, but they survived. Queer activist Shanil Lal stated that Bethlehem is not a college, it is a cult. The Minister of Education must stand against the bigotry if he cares about queer children and young people. To call this school a cult and bigoted because of its religious beliefs, to claim discrimination 
because it believes that a marriage is between a man and a woman, completely goes against the LGBT community's claims that they are pushing for diversity, inclusion, and acceptance of everyone in New Zealand, regardless of how they choose to live. It's hypocritical at best, and at worst, it's a clear example of tyrannical ideological thinking. Shanil Lal goes on to say that their stance on gender is dripping with transphobia, Bethlehem College does not understand the difference between sex and gender. Now, to claim that the school does not understand the difference between sex and gender, to push on them that there is a difference between sex and gender, assumes that you are correct in your understanding, and that your understanding is the only one that can exist. When the school itself, because of its religious beliefs, believes that sex is defined at birth and cannot be changed. So are we going to stop people from being able to have their own religious beliefs? Their own beliefs about sex and gender? I believe that sex is defined at birth. I don't believe that people need to change their gender in order to be happy. I believe that in maybe very few cases, transforming your gender would help with your gender dysphoria. But in a lot of cases, it has been proven to not help at all. And that people who start on affirming care usually end up a lot more unwell mentally than they were before they started. The chair of Bethlehem College, Paul Shakes, responded to these allegations of homophobia at the school as a cult and discriminating against trans people by saying that the first allegation was that our mainstream Christian belief about marriage is discriminatory. However, we do not require anyone to adopt our beliefs or live their lives accordingly. We're simply transparent about what we believe because it's the right thing to do by parents interested in enrolling their children at our school. Our message to those seeking to force us to change or suppress our beliefs is, we respect your rights, please respect ours. Now that makes complete sense, and it's what I've been pointing out this whole video so far. How come we are being forced to accept the rights of one group at the loss of the rights of another? Why are we being forced to accept the ideas of the LGBT movement in New Zealand at the moment, when we cannot have our own beliefs, and when Christians cannot have their own beliefs? When anyone with a differing view, whether it's religious or just personal, can be called out for discrimination if they disagree. We should have the right to disagree. Paul Shakes goes on to say that we added our belief about marriage to our statement of belief in 2019, after our integration agreement was signed in 1999. However, it's normal for expressions of belief to be amended and clarified over time. Our mainstream Christian belief about marriage was added in order to be transparent after other views of marriage emerged. We had also amended another point in our statement of belief since 1999, but no one has raised any concerns about this. So this supports the claim I made earlier that they most likely added this into their statement of belief because of the emerging differing views on marriage in the country, particularly because of the LGBT movement. And under the Education and Training Act 2020, they are allowed to do that if they feel that their special character has been or could be jeopardized. Unfortunately, this attack on religious freedom in New Zealand is not just isolated to Bethlehem College. Other state-funded Christian schools in New Zealand have been identified as having anti-queer policies by pride advocates, and they are now calling for a full-scale education inquiry into discrimination against the LGBT community. If I could say one thing to these schools, it would be go private. You are not going to win this battle. It appears that the government has thrown their full support behind the LGBT movement in New Zealand and that your religious views will not be safe as long as you continue to receive state funding and they have control over what you do and do not believe in. Just have a look at the responses here from the Human Rights Commission regarding the allegations and also the Prime Minister of New Zealand, Jacinda Ardern. 
The Human Rights Commission's warning schools they can't refuse to enrol students or discriminate against them because of their sexual orientation or family status. In a statement, the Commission says while it broadly supports a school's right to maintain and express its religious beliefs and special character, it would be concerned if that meant students or parents were excluded because of their views about marriage or gender. Now, the warning follows controversy surrounding Tauranga's Bethlehem College, a Christian school that specifies marriage is created by God and is between a man and a woman exclusively. I take a very, very simple view of this. Schools in New Zealand are obliged to ensure that they have a safe and inclusive environment for all children. Uh, and obviously, uh, some quite serious concerns have been raised around whether or not that is the case for the school in question. The Ministry of Education have been asked by ministers to go and look in greater detail uh, over whether or not that obligation is being met. Um, so I'll leave the ministry to do that job. But again, every school has to be a safe and inclusive environment. It's the least we can expect uh, in New Zealand. Uh, have you or would you seek assurances from the Ministry of Education that this isn't a, a, a broader problem, that other integrated schools might also be sneaking this sort of stuff into their... Um... I imagine that perhaps as part of uh, their um, consideration of some of the concerns that have been raised, uh, that they may well look more broadly. But look, at the moment, as I understand, they've been asked to look at some specific examples and they are doing that. Associate Education Minister Jan Tanetti also said that this is my absolute top priority to ensure all young people are safe in our schools. When something comes to light in one school, it's a norm that the ministry will look into other schools to see if this is happening elsewhere. We cannot allow this hypocrisy to continue. It's a violation of the Human Rights Act 1993 to discriminate against somebody based on their religion. And that is what is happening right now. Schools are being discriminated against and being investigated and will have their views forcibly changed by the Ministry of Education just because they hold a Christian belief. Pride advocates need to back off and let people live the way that they choose to live. They need to follow through with what they preach. Diversity, inclusion and acceptance. Acceptance of everyone. Acceptance of all beliefs acceptance of religion. Well, this is the end of another episode of Cutting the Line. Thank you for watching. If you enjoy what we do, like and subscribe. And as always, you can let us know what you think in the comments. Have a great day and we'll see you next time. See ya.